Let's talk about Tropical Storm how long and how it could impact Japan potentially as a typhoon here. Now I know the last few days we've been watching this area and it's really been struggling against shear. That's what you can see here on the satellite imagery. The clouds kind of getting skewed off towards the north and east here. You have that hard line on the western side. A classic example of shear with a passing a trough kind of ripping this away. But it is expected to kind of escape that a little bit and intensify. But another trough is more than likely going to turn this towards the north and you can see that with the official forecast from the japan meteorological agency showing it make that hard right turn before approaching the southern japanese islands now but way too close for comfort for parts of southwestern japan including around shikoku the key peninsula here and maybe yes over towards tokyo i would be watching this very closely now anytime a storm system passes just offshore of tokyo more than often it's drier it's kind of mixing in so tokyo doesn't really see much weather if at all uh but the izu islands could be getting impacted pretty good here and you kind of see we have actually almost a bit of the amihan for our philippine friends kind of wrapping in it's a solid early cold surge set up here that's really going to cause us to make that turn towards the north and east and gets disrupted and pull off towards the east uh, as well and uh, you know this is a testament this specific um storm system for the Google DeepMind AI model. And I, and I point that out here because yesterday I kind of jokingly posted this graphic, not jokingly, but seriously, it was a head-to-head -head versus the DeepMind on the right here in the ECMWF Ensemble, which was still showing this kind of impact southwestern areas of the uh, southern Japanese islands. So there was this, this huge mass of uncertainty. The DeepMind was also uncertain about when this trough was going to pay picked up, but it was more indicated the exact track we're seeing here in the forecast uh, right now. You can even see that here with JTWC. And it does look like, yeah, the new AI model from Google, which has only been publicly available for a short period of time. I've seen some starch defenders at the ECMWFs trying to take this personal that I was saying this model's handling it better. Uh, but this model's only been out for recent. It's actually still technically experimental but it has been nailing one storm after another with its accuracy and here we go again the cluster of the ensembles just were a lot more accurate yesterday and now today it as well um, continues to be kind of the better model option still some of it takes it on shore but the bulk of it keeps it offshore and you can see with the ECMWF ensemble today, look at this. It still has some members going towards Okinawa. And that doesn't seem the case. If if I'm wrong and this model is ECMWF is still has some sort of idea, I will admit it. But going back to the Google DeepMind and this, this it just shows that the AI is really getting there and i think that it's only going to get better the one of the biggest statement one of the most accurate statements i do know to this day is that the ai in general no matter if it's this or chat gpt or whatever is the worst it will ever be today what i mean by that is that Tomorrow, it's going to be better than it is today. And the day after that, it's going to be better than tomorrow. It is progressively getting better. And it shows right here with these weather models. Just absolutely nailing one forecast after another. Hopefully, this could be just another tool in our resources to help keep people safe and save lives out here. And I think that's going to be one of the big things. For now, though, they, the Ogasata Islands are getting impacted by uh, this storm system. How long? Uh, some big old waves coming in off of it. So that's going to be impactful for them out here, too. And even the southern Japanese islands, as this next cold surge comes in, you can see the waves kick around it. Okinawa, by Wednesday morning, you may not be getting a typhoon, probably not even rain. But you are going to be seeing some massive swells coming in from the north. So... Uh, surfers should be happy and plus big old waves along Shikoku the key peninsula heavy rainfall is still possible there and then as it skirts the southern coastline of Honshu including Tokyo some big swells just offshore so if you got plans taking a ferry out to the Izu Islands or something like that it's gonna be a no-go 
here by uh, Thursday. But yeah, you can see some of the heavier showers there along the coast. Now, if it skirts a little bit further offshore, of course, those rain forecast will dramatically be decreased here as well. Anyways, hey, like I said, check it back in with JMA, your local agencies. If you're military out there, maybe in Yokosuka, um, just make sure you check in with them and just see what they're saying here as well. But uh, good news today. I think a big takeaway from all of this is if you are in Okinawa, it doesn't look like it's going to be impacting you uh, directly here. Some big waves coming off of it, but not going to be seeing that direct impacts. Anyways, I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta. I got a separate update on Typhoon Motmo as it came across southern China here. And then we look at the long range forecast. We got another area out there towards the south and east we're keeping an eye on, but at least for the time being, a lot of northerly winds setting up. So that means we could be seeing a little bit of a break for our friends across the Philippines. As far as tropical weather is concerned, we're starting to switch over towards Amihan or the Northeast monsoon season. So my next videos will probably be leaning more towards that. Some increasing sunshine maybe across Northern areas of the Philippines. I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta. As always, stay safe out there. Okay, friends?